Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vin PF, and on today's episode, we're going back to the English from St. George's Distillery. Now, the funny thing about this, this is the English Smoky, and I actually did cover the English original, but it was like three and a half years ago, and it was episode 14 on the channel. So I won't put a link to it, but if you want to go and find that review, it's a little bit old now. The audio isn't great. I've got some weird graphics and some weird music, but hopefully you'll enjoy it nonetheless. Now, I uh, it kind of didn't really pick up the smoky. I don't know why. Maybe at the start of when I did the YouTube channel, I wasn't really into smoky whiskey, so I just thought maybe I'll get it at a later date. Just kind of forgot about it and then moved on to other things, whatever. This came into my possession via a tweet tasting that came from the English... the That came from the St. George's Distillery, and it celebrated the English smoky, the English original, and one of their new ones, the rum cask. So I was particularly impressed with the rum cask, but personally, I think this one won it out for me nowadays, which is probably good that I didn't cover it before because maybe it would have put me off. So the thing you need to know about this one versus the original, obviously the original, unsmoked, this one, peated. They say 45 ppms on the website, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. I think that might be the ppms before it's been distilled. It's a 43% whiskey. It's non-chill filtered, natural coloured. It goes around £40 in the UK, and in terms of this specific one, it's a mixture of first fill and refill, second fill, they say, ex-bourbon barrels. Let's get into the tasting and see what we've really got in the glass. So, now that we know that it's non-chill filtered and natural colour, we can talk a little bit about the colouring. Not too bad, kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe like a golden straw-like colour. And the nose on this thing is really good. Bags of vanilla, as you might expect, from a first fill and a second fill ex-bourbon barrel. For me, it's got this added layer of citrus to it. There is some kind of straw hay-like characters to it, but it's really light, really back. The interesting thing about this is the lack of real smoky notes on the nose. Maybe it's just because I'm getting used to the smoke now. But... I would be convinced that it wasn't that heavily peated at all. Let's try on the palette. Now, first impression is really good. The mouthfeel is really nice. It's got some extra viscosity that at 43%, I don't think it really has any right to have that, but it's got it and I like it. it next up is like this aniseed spiciness going on. There is some gentle smoke but it isn't really until you swallow the liquid and let the finish take place, which is kind of medium. There's a little bit of smokiness there, a little bit of um, a little bit of ashy there as well, but I wouldn't call it big smoke in any stretch. Now, as I said at the top of the show, out of the little range that they've got, they've got like a, a very wide selection now, but out of this kind of core range, this one's my favorite by uh, a long shot. The, the original is tasty, it is good, the rum cask was a little odd for me. Um, I get why people like it. I'm not really a rum fan. Um, it was tasty, but it didn't edge this for me. This has got that extra complexity to it that the smoke brings. And I think it's actually priced really well. You know, maybe sort of four or five years ago, £40 would have seemed a lot of money for something that, like, as some people say, that it's a non-Scotch, non-age statement. But I have to say, where I'm sitting right now, here in this chair, I don't really care about those things much anymore. Scotch is great, A statements are great, but there are plenty of non-Scotches, non-A statements out there that are worth your time and your money. They're getting better every day because all of the poor attempts at filling those gaps of cheap whiskey are being weeded out and we know where they are. The internet's a wonderful thing. We can talk about them. We can tell people what we think about them. Personally, I think that as a, an advocate, as an Englishman, as an advocate of English whiskey, this is pretty damn good for the price. I would buy a bottle of this again because after I've had this little wee dram as a part of the tweet tasting, it's opened my eyes to the smoky and I should probably go for it. That said, it isn't a smoke bomb. It isn't heavily smoked. The 45 ppms I talked about earlier, I don't know what they're, when they're measuring that, but personally, I don't think that comes across in the glass. When you compare it to something like Ardbeg, which is notorious for being around about that kind of 50 ppm mark, far more smoky than something like this. This is very light, very endurable, especially if you're not a huge smoke fan. This might be a good one to go to for that kind of bridging whiskey. But for me, top dog, I'm enjoying this. 
Hopefully you will too. Check it out if you get a chance.